Okay, some people out there have been asking me to do some videos uh, based on proof techniques, so I thought a good place to start would be um, a proof by contradiction. So this is going to be a simple calculus-based proof by contradiction. Um, if you aren't familiar with some calculus results, you're not going to be able to follow the proof, um, is what I'm trying to say. So. Um, what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to show that the equation 1 plus 2x plus x cubed plus 4x to the fifth equals 0 has exactly one real root. We're going to use a proof by contradiction to do that. So um, here's a little basic idea um, on what the, the, how the proof will go. And this is kind of true in general for a proof by contradiction. So I think it's all squeezed in there. So. Um, in this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to show at least one root exists. And to do that, we're going to use the intermediate value theorem. Um, next, we're going to make a guess. This is going to be our hypothesis. Um, hypothesis is a little cut off there. Um, this is going to be our hi hypothesis. We're going to assume that, well, we know at least one root exists. Let's assume that two or more roots exist. And then what follows from that? So I, the idea is, Assuming um, that two or more roots exist, and if we use that in conjunction with another known fact, which in this case is going to be the mean value theorem, or sometimes a special case that we're going to use is called Rolle's theorem, or Rolle's theorem, however it's pronounced, we're going to show that something else must happen. Uh, but the idea is that this something else that must happen can't happen, so there's something wrong. And the thing that's wrong is, well, our hypothesis. So um, we're going to show that it was, in fact, incorrect that there, to, to, to believe that there's two or more roots that exist. OK. So let's, uh, let's look at our original equation here again. So again, the, the first thing I'm going to do is show that at least one root exists to this equation. Um, and again, I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem to show that. Okay, so remember the e intermediate value theorem says basically um, if you have a continuous function, one way to show there's a root, if you have a continuous function, and I'm going to let the function um, 1 plus 2x plus x cubed plus 4x to the fifth, that's going to be my function f of x. The idea is if you have a continuous function, and notice this function is a polynomial, so it's certainly um, certainly a continuous function um, on any interval. The idea was to show there's a root of a continuous function by the intermediate value theorem. The idea is if you can show maybe at one point, we'll call it A, if you can show it's negative there, and maybe at, at another point B, if you can show it's positive there, well, the function, if it's continuous, has to cross the x-axis, and the place where it crosses your x-axis is going to be a root. OK, so easy enough here. Um, notice um, if we plug in, I think, the value 0 into our function, f of 0 will be 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 0 cubed plus 4 times 0 to the fifth, which is positive 1. And notice if we plug in negative 1, we'll get 1 plus 2 times negative 1 plus negative 1 cubed plus 4 times negative 1 to the fifth. And that's going to give us 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 4. What is that? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 6. OK, so notice what we've really justified here in this case is that for this polynomial, um, 1 plus 2x plus x cubed plus 4x to the fifth, um, we've shown that basically, OK, at negative 1, it's a negative value. And when we plug in 0, it's up here at positive 1. So we know that at least one root has to exist between negative 1 and 0. Now the problem is, of course, um, there's no guaranteeing the function doesn't cross, you know, a few times. And you can make arguments about the power of the polynomial and some other things, but um, it could certainly cross more than once. Um, okay. So at this point, we've used the intermediate value theorem, and we have now for sure that at least one root exists. 
so at least one root exists. And again, we're trying to show exactly one exists. Um, so now let's make the guess. Let's make the assumption. Let's assume that two or more roots exist. Okay, let's assume that two or more roots exist. Um, and if two or more roots exist, we can give them names. Um, so let's call them, I don't know, let's say little r1 for root 1 and little r sub 2 for root 2. Okay, so we've got our two roots here. So again, um, I don't want to erase my function because that's what we're playing with. Maybe I'll copy it and put it down here at the top real quick. Um, so f of x is 1 plus 2x plus x cubed plus 4x to the fifth. Okay, so we're going to assume that two or more roots exist, but we're going to show based on that there's something that can't happen, that's supposed to happen. Okay, so I know I, I showed that the roots were between negative 6 and 0, but don't worry about that. Um, let's just call the roots, we know the roots are somewhere. Okay, let's call them R1 and R2. We know that at least one of the roots has to be between, um, excuse me, I think negative 1 and 0. I don't know why I said negative 6. That was the Y value. Um, so we know there was a root at least between um, negative 1 and 0. So, but again, generically, let's just call the roots R1 and R R2. So if there's two roots, what has to happen? Again, we know this is a continuous function. Okay, it's a polynomial. We know that for sure. So if this is a continuous function, okay, well, let me just graph it, and maybe it crosses. Okay, so there's my function. Okay, remember the mean value theorem. Um, the mean value theorem, so you may want to take a look at that video as well. The mean value theorem, though, briefly says, suppose you have a continuous function on a closed interval. Okay, the idea about the mean value theorem says if you look at the endpoint, Excuse me, if you look at the slope of the line connecting the endpoints, so if this is b comma f of b, and this is the point a comma f of a, remember the mean value theorem said there has to exist at least one point c in there where the derivative evaluated at c, the derivative evaluated at c, so that's not a good, these lines are supposed to be parallel, but the idea is the slope of the tangent line at C equals the slope of the line um, that connects the point um, A comma F of A to the point B comma F of B. Okay, so again, this is what the mean value theorem said. It said there has to be at least one point that does that. Well, if we want to, we can think about A as being the value R1 and b as being the value r2. So the conclusion based on the mean value theorem now, it says again, if there's a continuous function, it says there has to be at least one point. Okay, so this is kind of the heart of the matter now. It says there has to be at least one point c that's in the interval r1 to r2 where if we take the derivative and we evaluate it at C, I think these should actually, uh, let me leave that alone. Um, it says if we take the derivative and, and evaluate it at C, it should equal the slope of the line connecting the endpoints. Well, if we connect the roots together, the slope of that line would simply equal zero. So it says there has to be a point on the function where the derivative equals zero. Okay, so one more time. We're assuming that at least two roots exist. We're calling them R1 and R2. Based on the fact that two roots has to exist and the fact that we have a continuous function, we can use the mean value theorem to justify that, well, if those two things were true, there has to be at least one point where the derivative equals zero. Okay, well, the thing to notice now is, okay, so notice that if we take the derivative of this original function, well, what's going to happen? Well, notice that the derivative f prime of x is going to equal 2 
plus 3x squared plus 20x to the fourth. And notice all the powers on the x are even. So no matter what number we plug in for x, I mean, if we plug in 0 for x, we're going to get at least 2 out. And if we plug in any positive or negative number, well, when you square it or raise it to the fourth power, it's going to stay positive. It's going to become a value larger than 2. So notice that the derivative is always greater than or equal to 2. But again, what we said was, we said if our hypothesis is correct, if there's at least two roots, well then there has to be a place where the derivative equals zero. But the derivative can never, ever, ever equal zero, just based on what we just said. It always has to be two or bigger. So what can be wrong? Well, what can be wrong is, well, maybe our function's not continuous, and we shouldn't be able to apply this result. But no, this is a polynomial. It's definitely a continuous function. Well, what else could have been wrong? The only other thing we really concluded or guessed was that there's two roots. So it must be that our hypothesis that there's two or more roots, that must be incorrect. OK, so it's incorrect to say that there's two or more roots. OK, if that's incorrect to say, well, I guess what's correct to say is there's at most one root. But we already know, using the intermediate value theorem, that there's at least one root. And now these two statements together those two statements together, if there has to be at least one root, and at most one root, well, there's exactly one root. OK, so we've used um, a proof by contradiction to justify now that that polynomial has exactly one root. So um, again, you know, as far as proof by contradictions go, this is relatively straightforward. If it's the first time you've seen them, um, don't take that to mean they're, they're mindless, because it's certainly not. Um, I would encourage you to, A, make sure you understand the mean value theorem um, and also the intermediate value theorem. And if it's the first time you've, see, you, you've seen this, um, you may have to watch it 2, 3, 20 times before the idea kind of sinks in. So. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. I hope this is uh, at least a moderately interesting example for you, um, and I hope it helps you out out there.